What has gone on at Arsenal? Like, I genuinely need your help. I want to know exactly what has happened at that club because something has certainly shifted. The club that they were very recently was a club that was so hungry. They were so sharp. They were so ruthless. They were so emotional, which had both positive and negative connotations. You know, sometimes they were they were overplaying things. They were over-celebrating things. They were being booked. They were being sent off. There were issues with Arteta. But equally, that emotion, that passion was a direct correlation to their position in the league. It was a direct correlation to the amount of points that they managed to accrue. Whereas now, you watch their last two performances. You watch the performance at the Emirates against West Ham United. You watch the performance at Craven Cottage against Fulham. And they seem flat. They seem lacklustre. They seem out of ideas. And it doesn't make sense because it isn't who they are. It's not what that club's about. It's not who their manager is. It's not what these players represent. So something doesn't make sense to me. And all of the notions that are put forward to me, they're all too obvious. Some of them are tedious. You know, if we start talking about maybe being bottlers or whatever, I find that really tedious. Some things I find too obvious. You know, the fact that maybe Fulham had more rest or whatever. I think that's that's just way too obvious and doesn't go anywhere near telling us the full story. But something has changed. Something has shifted. And something has most certainly gone wrong. It's now three Premier League games without a win for Arsenal. At the start of this month, Arsenal were top of the league. And a lot of people thought they were on course for the title. People saw a vulnerability in perhaps Manchester City set up, a vulnerability in the way Liverpool were doing things, a vulnerability in Unai Emery's Aston Villa. And a lot of people saw Arsenal as being title favourites. That has now gone. Lots of people have now said that Arsenal are actually in the hunt for top four, I've heard today. And when you look at their position in the league, if we think Tottenham are in the hunt for top four, there is a point between them. I don't subscribe to that theory. I think Arsenal are still capable of winning the league. It's going to be incredibly tough. And they have put themselves in a position where they now need to beat both Liverpool and Man City. That's the price that Arsenal have paid. Generally speaking, a point against Liverpool is fine. A point against City is fine. But that is not the case now. You take zero points in two consecutive London derbies against very beatable London sides in West Ham and Fulham. And I'm afraid that you now have to beat both Liverpool and Manchester City. And we're going to know on Valentine's Day. We will know exactly who this Arsenal team are. When you're having a night of amore on Valentine's Day, you're taking your missus maybe to Gay Paris or to a romantic restaurant in London's fashionable West End. That is the night that we will know exactly who this Arsenal team are. By that night, we will know. They play some significant fixtures before then. And I really can't predict how they're going to get on. Because at the start of this month, they were, what, top of the league. They're now fourth. They were top of the league at the start of this month. And they are now fourth. And they have gone three games in the Premier League without a win. And crucially, the performance that I've just watched tonight was undoubtedly their worst performance of the season. It's not a good way to end the year. You know, overall, I think the year of 2023 has been a good year for this Arsenal team. Of course it has. You know, they're moving in the right direction. They've, they've deployed some intelligence in the transfer market. They're happy with their manager. Things are moving in the right direction. They've got rid of some players that they were happy to get rid of. And generally speaking, the club are in a good place. 2023 has been a kind year to Arsenal Football Club and Arsenal will look back on the year 2023 kindly and fondly. But what a way to end it. They were so sluggish. They never got going. They were all over the place and it's now back-to-back defeats. You cannot lose 2-0 at home to a side like West Ham United who, let's face it, played them off the park. You know, West Ham United, on some level, Arsenal fans can feel aggrieved. And I know that there is the issue with Bowen's, the the ball around, uh, where where Jared Bowen, the ball probably went out. In my opinion, it went out. The truth is, we don't know. My opinion is the ball went out of play. And Arsenal will feel slightly aggrieved by that. But overall, I think West Ham were worthy winners. I really do. I think West Ham were worthy winners. And Arsenal were architects of their own downfall in that game. Because of the controversy around the ball going out of play, nobody really focused on the, the ludicrous defending. You know, what on earth is Zinchenko and Gabriel doing to allow the ball to catapult around the area before Jared Bowen had the opportunity to hook it back in? Those questions were never really answered. Those questions were never really asked, in fact, because 
everybody was focusing on the ball going out of play, which I concede it probably did. So if you're an Arsenal fan listening to this, you're going, well, the ball went out of play. And I do probably believe it did. But you can't lose to West Ham United in the manner that they did. You know, 77 touches in the opposition box and they didn't even score a goal. West Ham United missed a penalty to make it 3-0, which would have been total and utter capitulation. That was only on Thursday, which means that Arsenal have now got, what, one win in five league games. They are faltering and they are faltering so badly. And as I say, it's a galling way for them to end the year, putting in their worst performance of the season. Look, I do acknowledge that there was an element of bad luck against West Ham, but today... There was none. There was no bad luck. Fulham were fully deserving of the points. And I think I think that kind of plunges Arsenal, not necessarily into a crisis as such, but a crisis of confidence. Like, they've lost their way. They've lost their discipline. Like, they could have easily ended up with uh, Saliba being suspended. It's all gone a little bit wrong. They're lacking in leadership. They're lacking in direction. And ultimately, they can have no complaints. They were well beaten. And when you think about why, why is this happening? Where is it all going wrong? I find it so predictable that everybody immediately starts talking about Ivan Tony. I've just seen Paul Merson on Twitter. Arsenal's need to sign to Ivan Tony. It's not over yet. I don't think that tells a full story at all. I really don't. I think if you look at Arsenal's issues, there are obvious issues in the midfield. And the major reason that there are issues in the midfield is that they spent 65 million on Kai Havertz. You know, Tom, Thomas Partey, He's a fantastic player, but he's never really there. Martin Odegaard, sensational. Declan Rice, sensational. But Kai Havertz is not good enough. He is not good enough to play that position. Kai Havertz is not a better player than Granit Xhaka. And the Granit Xhaka inspired midfield last year, whilst it was brilliant, did not win the league. It did, however, have 13 points more than this Arsenal team have. So... I think that it's a misnomer. Ivan Tony this, Ivan Tony that, scoring the goals. They need a centre forward. They need a centre forward. They need a centre forward. I tell you what, it's the midfield. They need replenishing. They desperately need to replenish the midfield. I've even heard some talk about left back more than the midfield. And I tell you what, today, I know that Zinchenko is coming for some major criticism for his defending, particularly of late. I've just flagged it, haven't I? Again, of what happened against West Ham. But Arsenal massively missed him today. It's all very well saying you need a new left back, but you missed Zinchenko. But again, the midfield is where they need replenishments. And when you think about what was on offer for Arsenal today, a win would have meant that Arsenal finished 2023 on top of the Premier League. Instead of that, they're fourth. They had the opportunity to be top on Christmas Day, which is symbolic. And again, they didn't take it. They have to start taking these opportunities because it's going to get really intense now. And I think it's very ominous for Arsenal that Manchester City have started winning games. And there is something also symbolic about the fact that Arsenal are now below Manchester City and Manchester City also have a game in hand. If Guardiola's team win their game in hand, they open up a three-point cushion over Arsenal. Nobody, Arsenal included, took the opportunity to create the gap, the cushion against Man City. Manchester City should have come back from the Club World Cup chasing Somebody, whether it's Arsenal or Liverpool, they should have come back chasing somebody by 12 points. That never materialised. And I wonder now if it's getting to the stage where someone is going to regret that massively because it is ominous where Manchester City are. You know, Arsenal, they've had a season of comebacks, haven't they? A season of personality, a season of finding a way, a season of, of drama. And the late goal just didn't come. And do you know what was crucial against Fulham? It never really felt like the late goal was going to come. There was never that siege. Like, you know, against Arsenal, even when Garnacho scored. Against Manchester United, sorry, when Garnacho scored. Arsenal was still asking the questions. They were still knocking on the door. It was Arsenal pressing. There's this inevitability about Arsenal finding their way in that moment. And yet, it just didn't feel like that. It really did not feel like that against Fulham. Um, also, Arsenal started conceding. You know, what made Arsenal so good last year was that Saliba, Ramsdale, uh, Gabriel, they had a partnership, they had an understanding. Ben White looked a much better player. They've started conceding goals now from corners. It's four goals from corners across the last six games. Yeah, it's it's not good enough, particularly when you consider that they conceded just once 
from a corner in their first 14. But look, they're all over the place at the moment. It's not beyond them. They can rectify the situation. They can resolve the situation. And I actually believe that they will. The problem is, will it be too late? Now, before I let you go, I need to say thank you to every single one of you for tuning into these videos. I am honoured that you would join me. I'm honoured that you are part of this community. I'm honoured that you'd click subscribe. I wish you all the best 2024. I hope you had a wonderful 2023. And just remember this one thing. It's a glorious time of year at the moment. It's a time of year that is full of love and fulfilment and joy for the majority of us. But there are a lot of people who do not have that privilege. So if you have a mate who you think could do with a text, text him. If you go into the pub tonight to celebrate New Year, have a great time. But if there's someone who you think could do with the invite, invite them. Life is precious, everyone. And remember, there are a lot of people on the edge and we don't know. I'm sending love to you all. I'm sending luck to you all. And I wish you all the best for the new year. And I wish you all good things, love and prosperity. God bless. Have a wonderful 2024. Cheers.